Hey guys, it's Daniel from the Truck Insurance Channel. I want to talk to you about the different ways you can go about starting an insurance policy for your trucking company. There's a lot of different ways to do it, and it can be a little confusing on how to do it properly. So I'm just going to break down a couple different ones real quick, uh, just to help explain you know what might be best for your scenario. Everybody's scenario is different, so it's good to know your options, right? That's the main point of this. So. First off, uh, cooking or aging your DOT number and MC number. This is where we're starting with the lowest possible liability limit, BIPD, uh, bodily injury, property damage requirement from the FMCSA. So if you are under 10,000 pounds with your equipment, right, when you're filling out your FMCSA application, if you select that you are going to haul or use equipment that's under 10,000 pounds, then you're going to get a requirement from them, from the FMCSA, of a 300,000 combined single limit for your BIPD or your auto liability. That's the only thing they really care about unless you're a household goods mover, okay? Or if you're hauling hazmats. If you're over 10,000 pounds, then it's automatically going to be 750 unless when you're selecting the commodities, you add in autos or cars, essentially. Then it'll bump up to a million. So if you select... Uh, non-commercial motor vehicles weighing under 10,000 pounds, your BIPD requirement for FMCSA will be 300 CSL. When you go to get a policy for 300 CSL versus 750 or a million, it's going to be way, way cheaper. So if you want to start by cooking your DOT where you're not actually going to run, you're just going to wait out the first 30, 60, 90 days, or even more, I guess some guys that will wait like six months and just pay for a real minimum policy, just to get that time built up on their MC. This is the way to go about doing that. We can help you out with that. I've got another video on how to change your FMCSA application. If you're not on the 300 CSL, if you're already on 750 or a million, it's not that hard to fix it. Um, and then like right before you start running, we go in, you do an MCS 150 or um, there's a form that you can submit to have your requirement bumped up to whatever you need to actually match the operations you're about to begin doing. Okay. Real easy, smart way to get past this intro period where a lot of brokers are trying to like weed people out, not work with you for the first 90 days normally. That's not a bad idea at all. The next one, which is our most common thing we do, is minimum liability. All right? So you're not trying to wait like 30 days or more, okay? You probably are about to get a truck. You're past the 21 days or, or close to it uh, for applying for your authority. Pass that like pro or getting to that protest period where you can um, get your policy and actually get activated and go hit the road. So we start with this because normally it's going to be less money down. Everybody wants the cheapest thing down. It's not like it really saves you money. It just defers some of what you're going to owe, and it'll save you money too because it's prorated depending on how long it actually takes you to, you know, start the policy, get your truck, get everything else in order, and actually hit the road. So it saves you money, but it defers some money. So keep that in mind. Like if your down payment was going to be 2000 with a, a fully operational policy, but then you start with just the minimum liability with the absolute minimum, just auto liability at probably 750 to match your operations and get the authority activated, it might only be a thousand down. So that other thousand is going to be prorated based on when you bump your coverages up and add on whatever else you need. So, like I said, this is what most people do when they're about to hit the road, when they're like ready to go get their truck like that week or the next week, that type of thing. So, minimum liability, that's the way we go a lot of the time. Uh, we just add on or increase the coverages that you need as you need them, right? So, you're not paying for anything extra too. Next is fully operational. This is, you've got a truck, you're ready to hit the road tomorrow or today or whenever. Like, you're ready to go. All you need is your insurance in place. Everything on your FMCSA application is perfect. Nothing needs to be changed. You've got everything ready. All you got to do is get your insurance in place and then go book loads and, and run, start hauling. So that's, that's pretty much it. Like that's pretty simple. All right. Less and less people are starting with this though, because of all the delays and everything. Like we start a lot with the minimum liability because there can be delays on getting your truck because it's, you might uh, have a driver that's on the fence and you don't have everything else in place yet. So instead of paying for everything that you're not even technically going to use today or tomorrow or the next day, you start with the minimums and then as you need it, we add it on. The other way, which we haven't, I've never really talked about on my channel before, 
um, is going from a bobtail or non-trucking policy to having your own authority. So this is, if you're leased on to somebody and they're covering your auto liability and cargo on their trucking company. So you're leased onto someone else's motor carrier, but you have your own bobtail or non-trucking and, and maybe physical damage on one policy, right? If you have this through Progressive, you can convert this to a policy of your own authority if it's already set up in your business name, all right? If it's in your personal name uh, and you're starting an authority like with an LLC name, you can't swap the names. You'd have to start a new policy which isn't a big deal. You could also go cook or age your DOT number on a separate policy with your business name. But if you've already got a business name set up for your bobtail policy, you can convert this to a policy with your own authority. We just go in and we swap from non-trucking liability to primary liability, which is like what the FMCSA needs. And then we submit the filings that gets you activated. And there's no down payment when you're doing this. Again, it's not like you're not going to pay a down payment essentially there's money that's going to be owed but it's going to typically be deferred right so if you just paid your most recent payment for this policy you might have 30 45 plus days before there's a, a bigger nude payment from converting this so you can be on the road for a bit before having to fork out a lot of money for insurance which is kind of nice um that's pretty much it though so i'll i'll have other videos check the links below for like how to get quotes on each one of these and more details on cooking and aging and also how to set this up properly. Um, have a lot more out for you here soon. So like, subscribe, all that good stuff and uh, comment in the sections if you have any questions. Happy to help out as always. Thank you guys. Have a good one.